the video is out and we are getting our first look at this surveillance video of the deadly shooting of a suspected shoplifter at a San Francisco Walgreens. So the DA released the video explaining her reasoning not to charge the security guard who fired the gun. Now here's a warning. Some of it may be tough to watch. So the video shows how quickly the encounter last month escalated after the guard confronted Banco Brown at the store's entrance. And so at one point in the scuffle, the guard in the dark clothing has Brown pinned to the ground and then lets him go. So as Brown is backing out of the doorway, he's seen making a slight movement toward the guard and then continues stepping backward when the guard then raises his gun and fires. So Wilson Walker is here to take us through this video that's been released. And the DA was very clear that people are probably going to have a reaction, which is normal, but she also doesn't want anyone to make up their minds based on just this video alone. Hard to do, but that is what her message is right now. Well, we had heard descriptions of this moment, or at least the very end of this encounter, Brown leaving the store, maybe stopping there for a moment. Well, now everyone can watch those moments for themselves and it all happens in really about two seconds. And for that reason, I would ask that members of the public and the press ensure that they view all of the evidence in this case and not simply the video. The public can now see what happened right in the Walgreens doorway, a physical confrontation that ended in a momentary face off and a gunshot. But it's the video, the witness statements and the testimony of the guard himself, said District Attorney Brooke Jenkins in outlining her decision not to file charges. I understand the reaction as human beings that many of us who have seen that video now had. I shared in that reaction. Uh, but as I said, as a prosecutor, I could not stop there. And she says guard Michael Anthony's interview with police was critical. That video was also made public. I picked up my weapon out my holster and I had it face towards the ground. I didn't have no intentions on just going straight to shoot because I didn't feel like I was totally in imminent um, danger until she advanced towards me. And at this time, there is nothing to rebut his statements regarding the fact that he acted in self-defense. Um, guard also told police that Banco Brown threatened to stab him, but no knife was recovered and the eyewitness statements did not mention the stabbing threat. The issue there was that there was also no one who indicated that it wasn't said. And while I understand it, it as, a, as a resident, you would wanna say, well, just let the jury decide. That is not the standard for charging. We have to believe at the time that we charge a case that a jury of 12 would convict, not let's just charge the case and see what happens. Uh, it's really conspicuous, I think, how the guard is able to overpower the victim rather handily. Um, he puts the victim on the ground and certainly is overpowering him at that point. Former prosecutor Tony Brass has seen the video and he thinks it raises a number of questions, but he's not sure how conclusive it would be for a jury. Um, and I, I don't know, like th this case is one of those, like if the question is, would I charge it? I don't know is the answer. I, I, I would struggle with it. And the district attorney acknowledged that the public will continue to struggle with this case. That she says is why she released the video. The fact that we released this report and this evidence is not an ordinary situation. That is not something that we normally do in criminal cases. But this, as we know, is an extraordinary set of circumstances that has had growing concern among San Franciscans and even beyond. And for that reason, I felt it was appropriate for our office to take an extraordinary step in being more transparent than normal in this process. All right, Wilson joining us now. I have to agree with her that I was taken aback that that video was released and she gave her reasoning. That's what I agree with her reasoning for releasing it because it has this conversation. You and I during your story were looking at it and talking about it. The prosecutor has his own take on it. If you if you listen to what she said today, she acknowledges that the that the video is sort of shocking mm -hmm. and you might come away with an initial impression. She didn't describe that, but she acknowledge that you might have one and then went on to be very specific and but then there's this and there's this and there's this and again it's not just the the, the evidence as she sees it but she she points to can we make a case to a jury with this are we going to are we going to convince 12 people that this is this is an up and down 
this is an open shut case. Right, for the jury. Yeah, and no. also we should mention that there is no audio, so you can't even hear the exchange if there were threats made. Right. Uh, were there witnesses around that gave accounts? There's two witnesses. They, they point to two specific witnesses mm -hmm. uh, in the report that she releases today. And as you heard her say, no one says that they heard anything about this knife or the threatened, uh, the, the threatened stabbing. Mm -hmm. But then there's nothing to counteract it. She said that the, the guards credibility had to be weighed sure. in this. Uh, but look, you know, a lot of people had a lot of opinions about this case before the video came mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Is the video going to change opinions? Is it going to solidify how people might have felt before they saw the video? Right. Uh, that remains to be seen. And I think if you listen to the district attorney today, she acknowledged that the video is not necessarily going to quell a lot of concerns. No, it's not. And our hearts go out to the family of the victim and uh, certainly a hard one to watch for all of us to see. And Wilson, I appreciate you uh, explaining it to us. Thank you. All right. Now, last week, the Board of Supervisors unanimously urged Jenkins to release the video sooner. District 10 Supervisor Shimon Walton told us today he's worried this will actually set a precedent for other guards to use deadly force. He wants the state attorney general Rob Bonta now to step in. It's hard for me to believe anyone can come to the conclusion that this was not an execution after watching the video. I did not see a perceived threat. I do not know how you can create a perceived threat again when you clearly had the upper hand, the entire perceived altercation. Matt Dorsey actually represents the district where the shooting happened. He tweeted today he appreciates the DA's transparency, but he doesn't want to comment on the decision since there could be civil cases in the future. And he added, quote, while I know today's outcome doesn't feel like justice to many who knew and loved Banco Brown, I pray that time and God's loving grace can heal the trauma of this tragedy for all who have been touched by it.